All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so this Monday I posted um, a status and it was about making sure that your self-love and your self-care doesn't turn into self-idolatry. Um, so this Monday I posted a status and it was about making sure that your self-love and your self-care doesn't turn into self-idolatry. Um, and while I was writing that, it was something that was kind of on my heart for a little while because I've seen a lot of people talking about self-love and self-care, which is good. It's great to care about yourself and to love yourself, but we're talking about it in a, in a way that's kind of like, it's, it's shifting into like self-idolatry, it's shifting into putting yourself above everything um, everything else. And I'm just going to read the status real quick for those who may not have seen it. And then I'll just get straight into what God gave me. And so while I was writing that status, um, God began to da download more. And um, he kind of showed me that he wanted me to go ahead and just share um, what he gave me on live. So this is why I'm here tonight. All right. So it said, make sure that your self-love and self-care doesn't turn into self-idolatry. Um, in a time where everyone is focused on self, doing what makes them happy, choosing whatever serves them and quickly getting rid of whoever and whatever doesn't serve them. We as believers must be very careful not to quickly adopt this mindset. Um, we are called first and foremost to serve God and then to serve people. There are many instructions given to us in scripture that don't line up with self-love and self-care with the self-love and self-care mindset. If we are not careful, we can end up putting self-love and care above God and his word. And I'm going to read that again. It says, if we're, if we're not careful, we can end up putting self-love and self-care above God and his word. Um, there is nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. There's nothing wrong with taking um, time out for making sure that you are healthy in all aspects of your life. But there is something wrong when you believe that everything and everyone in your life must serve you. There is something wrong when you so easily want to get rid of whoever and whatever doesn't serve you. And you forget that all your God-given, um, that you forget all about your God-given mandate to serve others. Let's read between the lines. Okay, and that's the title for today is Warning, Read Between the Lines. So let's read between the lines of these new ideologies. Um, let's, um, behind some of these new things is the worship of everything else but God. So look at everything through the lens of God's word and don't be so quick to adopt every new thing um, and every new way of thinking. So that was the status. And like I said, as, it, as I was writing that status, God began to download more um, to me and he made it clear that he wanted me to go ahead and, and share on this live. Um, so the title of this is Warning, Read Between the Lines. So we all know we're in like a social media age. Um, a lot of information is passed around very easily. Someone can come up with a new idea. Someone can come up with a new um, way of thinking, a new um, theology or something. Someone can come up with something and all they have to do is write it out click send and it'll literally go across the world. And um, because of this new information age and the social media age that we're in different ideas, religious beliefs, ways of thinking, even things like witchcraft, new age, um, self-love, cancel culture, these are things that people can readily um, receive with just the click of a button. And this social media and all these things have their place. Um, it has its benefits, but the issue is that we're so quick to take on these new ideas. We're so quick to eat up everything that's out there. Um, we're so quick to, to take on these new mindsets without first comparing it to the word of God, without first asking God and searching his word and saying, God, does this even line up with your word? We're so quick to take everything that looks good, seems good, that, that feels good to our flesh, um, everything that tickles our fancy. We're so quick to just go ahead and receive it without first comparing it to the word of God as believers. And this message is really for believers. If you're not a believer, I pray that this message um, encourages you to come to Christ because, you know, there's no better place to be than in the Lord. Um, so I really want to encourage all of us to stop and to check with God, to stop and to read between the lines, check with God before you see these things. Um, the, the issue with this um, whole social media age and this and this information age is that once our favorite celebrity, our favorite pastor, our favorite preacher, our favorite influencer, or even our favorite um people that we really look up to, once they say something, we don't even double check it. We just automatically receive it. And I think the enemy uses that. Like people that you love, people that you trust, um, he can use that. People that seem good, people that seem godly, he can use that to get you to just receive anything they say without first checking with God. Um, so self-love and self-care, I'm going to talk about that real quick. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself, but the issue comes in when everything, you believe that everything is meant to serve you. The issue comes in when you believe that 
the issue comes in when you believe that if something doesn't serve you, then you have to get rid of it. Or if someone doesn't serve you, then you have to get rid of, rid of it. Um, our self-love and our self-care, we're now putting that above God's word. And it's becoming idolatry, okay? It's becoming idolatry. And I know it sounds good. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with taking some days off and refreshing yourself. There's nothing wrong with, you know, um, saying no sometimes. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, when God is first in your life, Self does not come before God. Self-love and self-care never comes before God and his word. Um, so is your, ask yourself, is your self-love and is your self-care coming before God and his word? Are you making yourself an idol? Um, I believe that we're in a time where people are beginning to make themselves idols. Whatever does it, doesn't feel good to them. Whatever doesn't sound good to them. You know, whatever doesn't please them, whatever, it's, it's almost like, yeah, the Bible says this, but this is how I feel. Yeah, the Bible says this, but this is my experience. Yeah, the Bible says this, but this is what's going on right now. You know, black is king. These things that are, that are coming up, when you think about that phrase, black is king, it's pretty much saying that the color of my skin, my identity is in the color of my skin. No longer is God king, but instead the color of my, my, my skin is king. And now I'm making myself an idol above God and above his word. Um, so idolatry, what is idolatry? Idolatry is the worship of idols. So we know that anything that we put above God is an idol. And the very first commandment that God gives in, is in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. And it says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. And this includes the God of self. I really want you guys to pause and think about that. Because when we think about idols, sometimes we just think about stuff. We think about other people, but we forget about ourselves. And I truly, truly, truly believe this, this word, this message is a warning. Do not make yourself an idol. Do not make your pleasures an idol. Do not make what sounds good to you an idol. Once you make yourself an idol, whatever you like is what you're going to do. You're going to lead yourself. You're going you're gonna, to um, direct your own life. You've taken God off of the throne of your life and now you put yourself on the throne, right? Do not make yourself an idol. There are things being thrown at us through social media. There are things being thrown at us through different mediums, information being thrown at us that sound good, it seems good. It's all about taking care of you and all these things, but it's slowly but surely leading us down to the path of making ourselves idols. And that's why I titled this, read between the lines, discern by the spirit, get into your word, find out what your word says and compare these things with the word of God. Compare these things with the word of God. The thing is the enemy, is not he's not gonna come like a wolf. He's gonna dress up like a sheep. He's going to dress up like an um, like an angel of light, even though he's an angel of darkness. So you really have to judge these things by the spirit. You have to judge them by the word of God, not because your favorite influencer said it, not because your favorite Christian influencer, Christian pastor or preacher, not because they said it. And to be honest, some of these well-known pastors, they're moving into humanism. They're moving into like teaching things that are like, that stem from psychology. They're moving into teaching any and every entrepreneurship, teaching things that promote you and that sound good and seem godly because they're, they may quote unquote, not be negative, but at the same time, it is not of God. It may sound good and seem good, but it's not of God. Um, so when we think about when we think about um, in the scripture, let's compare, you know, some of our some some of the things that we say, for example, um, some things that people say is that if it doesn't serve you, get rid of it. Right. If it doesn't serve you, get rid of it. Another thing is do what makes you happy. Um, put yourself first. Right. Put yourself first. And, yeah, you, there are times where you need to put yourself first, but you never come before God. You never come before God. Um, one second. So if we look at places in scripture, for example, Esther, let's just use Esther as an example. When Esther, Esther we know that she was a queen. We know that um, she was pretty much the, the king's wife. She, was, she had a high position, but there came a time where she was asked by God through Mordecai to fast and to go before the king. It would have put her to death. What God required of her to do would have put her to death. According to this self-love and self-care culture, what Esther did was not self-love. What Esther did was not self-care. Esther did not put herself first. Esther could have very well said, well, I'm the queen. This doesn't serve me. 
this doesn't please me this doesn't seem good to me so i'm not going to do it right and once again the title of this is read between the lines our culture is telling us put yourself first our culture is telling us do what makes you happy our culture is telling us if it doesn't serve you then get rid of it our culture is telling us if they don't serve you get rid of them our culture is telling us to quickly cancel people right but the word of god says deny yourself the word of god talks about things like patience kindness love gentleness sometimes you have to be gentle with people sometimes you have to be patient with people even when they're getting on your nerves sometimes god wants to put you in position to help bring someone else to the kingdom and it doesn't look like self-love it doesn't look like self-care right it's not all about you it's, it doesn't serve you it didn't serve esther to fast three days and to put herself in the line of death to go and save a nation right let's go to another person abraham god told him to leave his family leave his land leave everything that he knew leave all of that behind and to follow him right god told abraham to do that that did not line up with self-love or self-care abraham could have very well been like well let me see if this serves me abraham could have very well been like well let me see if this serves me and my wife we have all these people all this land why would we leave here right and the thing is when it comes to obedience obedience comes before self obedience to god sacrificing for god doing what god tells you to do comes before self it don't line up with this self-care self-love idea that we've that we've adopted right and when we let's let's talk about witchcraft and all this new age stuff a lot of people get into that and i'm going to talk about that as well because it's becoming more prevalent today a lot of people get into that because it serves them right they want to get a house they want to get a car they want to be successful they want to get a business they want to get married they want this so when you think about witchcraft it's manipulating and forcing things to go your way to get what you want self-idolatry right self-idolatry all these things and this is a warning from the lord all of these things are leading us down to self-idolatry no longer is god king no longer is is jesus christ king now self is king now black is king and that's a hot mess i'm gonna get into that a little later now black is king but jesus christ was king yesterday he's king today and he's gonna be king tomorrow and when he comes back every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord whether they want to or not if you set yourself up as an idol i came to tell you today that i'm sorry but when jesus christ comes back or when you stand before him if he if you stand before him before he comes back if you stand before him before you come before he comes back your idol of self is going to be knocked down your idol of self is going to be knocked down like that god um dagon i think in first samuel um in the book of first samuel when they they raised up that god and it fell it had to bow down to the king of kings and the lord of lords you cannot sustain yourself your ideas your ways what pleases you it cannot sustain you don't think that you can lean on your own understanding the bible says that the heart of man is wicked and deceptive who can know it the bible says that that we're depraved we're full of sin if we could save ourselves if we were sufficient to be our own gods we would not need god we would not need jesus christ but he died for us because we're our own sin our own ways are killing us all right and let's talk about joseph i'm just giving a few examples in scripture just to kind of debunk this and like i said there's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself there's nothing wrong with looking good there's nothing wrong with improving yourself going to therapy and all these things but do not make yourself an idol do not set yourself up as god do not lean on your own understanding do not direct your own life don't fall for this 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 narrative don't fall for this thing that, that the enemy is trying to push through social media through society okay let's look at joseph joseph his brothers in genesis they sold him into slavery okay he went through a huge a long process and eventually he became um, second in command in egypt his brothers came to him he disguised himself and he, his brothers did not know that it was him according to this self-care and this self-love and this cancel culture according to this culture of making yourself god of doing whatever makes you happy of pleasing you joseph should have canceled his brothers joseph should have should have put his brothers in prison 
Joseph should have given, have, have, have um, laid out vengeance on his brothers for what they did to him, but he did not because Joseph was submitted to God. Abraham was submitted to God. Esther was submitted to God. It was not about self. It was always about God. It was always about God. So I really want to encourage you when you hear these things and this self-love, self thing, I'm talking about this only because this is what God highlighted, but there are many other things. Like when you go on social media, people are posting a lot of things. A lot of things are being shared. And I think when things are shared a lot and it's popular and it gets a lot of views, we think, hmm, a lot of people like it. Maybe it's okay. But no, you cannot go by, by numbers. You can't go by, you know, if this famous person over here with 5 million followers approves this and I should approve it. No, you need to judge everything by the word of God. The Bible tells us to test the spirit and see if it be of God. Test the spirit and see if it be of God, right? So things like patience, love, kindness, um, all of these things go against what we call self-love and self-care. All right. And the best form of self-love and self-care is obedience to God. OK, the best form of self-love and self-care is to do what God told you to do. The best, the best love of the best form of self-love and self-care is to submit your life to Jesus, because that's the best place that you will ever be. And guess what? When you submit your life to him, guess what? No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. I'm, I don't have a head. Jesus Christ now becomes my head, right? Jesus Christ now becomes my head. That's the best form of self-love. And within Christ, he will tell you what you should and should not do. He will tell you when you should distance yourself from someone. He will tell you when you need to put up boundaries. He will tell you when you need to end a relationship. He'll tell you those things. He will lead. He will be God, right? Not you. You won't cancel people because they're getting because they're getting on your nerves. You won't cancel people because they burn you. Yes, you're going to put up boundaries, but God will sometimes require you to love people in spite of. And that does not fit into this self-love and this self-care narrative. Um, so before I close, I just want to share that the enemy has an agenda to desensitize you. Believers, son and daughter of God, child of God, the enemy has an agenda to desensitize us. And that's why I titled this warning. Warning, read between the lines. The enemy has an agenda to desensitize you. Um, so in this agenda, he wants to cause you to put your guards down. He wants you to cause you to lower your standards. And he wants you to cause you to become passive to evil. He wants to cause you to become blind to ungodliness, right? He wants to make you so passive that evil can take place right in front of you, that wickedness can, can be taking place, that something can seem good and sound good, but because you've been desensitized, because you're no longer in your word, because God is no longer the God of your life, but instead you've made yourself an idol because you're worshiping celebrities, because you're worshiping and going with everything that they said, now you cannot even see when the enemy is standing right in front of you. Now we're ex as Christians, we're accepting everything any and everything because we are desensitized this culture wants to desensitize us sons and daughters of god so that by the time the antichrist comes by the time things are getting worse you're going to take that mark right you're going to take that mark you're going to do whatever to survive because you've made yourself god the enemy wants to do not feed into the enemy's agenda. And it's not people. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We wrestle against um, against principalities in high places. Okay? It's not people. It's not certain celebrities. It's the enemy using them because they're open to be used by Satan. But when you have an eye to, an eye to see what God is doing, when you have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, when you have an eye that's open to the Spirit of God and open to the spiritual realm, no matter who or what is being used, even if your favorite influencer is being used, even if your favorite pastor, some of these pastors are being exposed right now. Some of our favorite pastor, we're in a time of great exposure. God told me that, I think, sometime last week, great exposure. We're in a time of great exposure, and we're going to be shocked at some of these people that are being exposed. Some of these people that we've looked up to, they've written books. They've done plenty of videos. They, they've done retreats and conferences, and they're being exposed. But when your eyes are open to the spiritual realm, it doesn't matter who or what says it. You're going to pick up your word, and you're going to see if it lines up with the word of God, and you're going to be able to say, no, that's not God. I don't receive it. Okay. 
Your foundation and your basis will be on the word of God, right? Try not to idolize people. Try not to idolize people, okay? Do not idolize people and do not idolize yourself. So 1 Peter um, chapter 5, verse 8, it says, be sober, be vigilant. Um, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Okay, and I want you to share this because I think a lot of people do need to hear this. Um, I'm going to read that verse again. It's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I don't know why in 2020 we think that the enemy no, no longer wants to take our head off. I don't know why in 2020 we think that Satan is just cool with us being Christian. The, the enemy still has an agenda, the same agenda he had in the garden in Genesis, he has today in 2020. Satan is watching us. He's he's going to try to lure us with different things. So he's going to come subtle. He's going to come sneaky. He's going to come with things that look and sound like God. He's going to come with things that, that seem good. Okay? So what does sober mean? Sober means not addicted to intoxicating drink, not drunk. And a synonym for sober is clear-headed, okay? A synonym for sober is clear-headed. Nowadays, we're drunk with the world, we're drunk with culture, we're drunk with trends and popularity, right? We're drunk with celebrity worship. If our favorite celebrity, my God, if you just look at this week, Black is King, some of these people worship these celebrities. If our favorite celebrity says something, and other believers say, you know what, this contradicts God's word. Nowadays, we have Christians telling telling these Christians that are warning people to shut up. We have them saying, saying, oh, you're doing too much, too much. It doesn't take all that. But let God be truth and every man be a liar. We're drunk with everything else. We're drunk in everything else except the spirit of God. And our hearts and our spirits are intoxicated. They're contaminated with the world. Ask yourself, am I intoxicated by culture? Am I intoxicated with social media and popularity? You know, am I intoxicated by these things? If I have to separate myself from certain things and certain people, if I have to stand against the grain, if I have to, to, to be ostracized for the sake of standing for Christ, if I have to look crazy before my family members and my closest friends, if I have to tell them, no, you shouldn't be doing witchcraft. No, you shouldn't be worshiping your ancestors. No, you shouldn't be praying to your ancestors. If I have to say that and get and, and get talked about and get stomped on because of that, will I do it? Or am I so drunk with being pleased by with people? Am I so drunk with being on people's good side? Am I so drunk with, with being popular that, I, that I'm desensitized to what the enemy is doing right in front of me? Are you drunk with the spirit or are, you, or, or are you drunk and filled with this world? And what does vigilant mean? Vigilant, vigilant means alert. It means watchful, especially to avoid danger. Keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. Are you vigilant? And I know a lot of people will say, well, it doesn't take all that. And um, just to make it clear, like I'm not saying that every single little thing, you know, you have to look for a demon under every rock. No. What I'm saying is that the enemy wants to take you out and he wants to desensitize you. And the Bible put, God put the um, first Peter 5, 8 in the Bible for a reason. And I think one of the reasons he put it there is for these end times because now everything looks like God and it's not. Everything looks good and it's not. So are you vigilant? Are you aware of the enemy's devices? Are you aware of what he's doing? Right? Have you made yourself God to the point where you can't even see? Have you made yourself and other people God to the point where you're blinded by them? And I'm going to give a quick example of this. Back in 2016, I don't know if some of you remember, I think it was it was Obama who legalized homosexual marriage um, nationwide here in America, right? He legalized homosexual marriage, and um, a lot of people were saying, a lot of people were warning, Christians were warning and saying that this is going to open the door to things like um, the legalization and the acceptance of pedophilia, of incest, of bestiality. People were saying and warning that this is going to open the door to all these things. And I remember clear as day back in those in that time, um, I think it was around 2016. It, it was within Obama's um, 
his turn. But back around that time, other Christians were saying, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Let these people do what they want to do. And there were Christians and, and Christian leaders that were supporting Obama simply because he was black. They were supporting Obama simply because he was for the black people and they did not want to speak out against what he was legalizing. They didn't want to speak out against this, this thing because they made him God, right? They were more concerned about the black people than they were about God and his word. And people were warning and saying that by legalizing this, that it would open the door to things like, um, like pedophilia. It would open the door to this being accepted. Four years later in 2020, look at where we're at. Look at where we're at four years later in 2020. Now in our schools, they're teaching children about homosexuality. They're teaching children about masturbation. They're teaching children about gay sex. They're teaching children about several orientations. It was not long ago that we had trans, um, transgenders and trans, transgenders in libraries having story time with children. That began because we accepted the lie that homosexuality was okay. That began because the church did not stand up. Okay, we have pastors and preachers approving Obama, clapping, saying, go ahead and do it. We have Christians telling other Christians not to speak out against it. We have Christians telling other Christians to just be quiet, let people do what they want. And you're right, people can do what they want, but we're called to warn, we're called to speak out, we're called to cry loud and spare not, we're called to warn people just like I'm doing now. And now on what, what we have on the rise today is things like witchcraft. What we have on the rise today is things like people calling themselves gods and goddesses. We have people worshiping being black. We have people going into religions that promote black people and, and black skin color instead of Jesus. We have people doing things like sage and, 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 and new age practices and, and praying to the universe and worshiping their ancestors and praying to their ancestors and using crystals. And we're warning people and we have other Christians saying, shut up. How can you be a child of God and you don't see these things? How can you be a child of God and you're fast asleep? And you're saying, don't say anything. But we had an example back in 2016 of what happens when we allow things to take place. The thing is, we as believers, we are the gatekeepers. We are supposed to be the watchmen on the wall. We're supposed to be the gatekeepers in America. Imagine if every single believer in America got on their knees, fasted and prayed and began to pray and cry out for the nation back in 2016 when homosexuality was being legalized. Imagine if the church was on one accord and said, no, we're going to stand against this thing. Imagine what would happen. Maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't have these wicked things in our schools. Maybe, just maybe, they wouldn't be teaching our children how to masturbate in our schools, how we stood up against homosexuality. Maybe, just maybe, if we weren't so caught up in pleasing the masses, maybe, just maybe, if we weren't so caught up in, in, in being popular and being accepted, maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I came to tell you to read between the line. I came to warn you that the enemy wants to desensitize you, that there is an agenda to, to cut your head off. I came to tell you that there's an agenda to, to cause you to be fast asleep. Many Christians are like the man who was asleep and, and a thief, a robber came into his home and plundered his home and they did not know because they were fast asleep in self-idolatry because they were fast asleep in celebrity worship, because they were fast asleep in worshiping their favorite pastor, because their favorite pastor said, this is okay, and that is okay, even though it goes against the word of God. Ask yourself, can you see in the spirit? Right, churches are being run like businesses. Churches are now worried about money and numbers instead of worried about pleasing God, instead of worrying about being led by the spirit of God. Where are we today? Where is the church? Who's going to open up their mouths? Who's going to warn people and say witchcraft is wickedness? Who's going to warn people and say you should not be praying to your ancestors? Who's going to be honest and say your ancestors are dead? They cannot hear you. It has no power. Who's going to warn people and say crystals, when you, when you pray to and use crystals, you're opening up doors to demonic play? Who's going to warn people and say when you open up doors of witchcraft, it's going to affect your children and your children's children, and they're going to have to fight to break that thing off of your generation, off of your line? Who's going to open up their mouths? Who's going to cry loud and spare now? Who's going to sound the trumpet? 
Who's going to bang the, the drum and cause people to wake up? Do not be silent. Don't allow people to, to make you silent. Don't allow people to, to cause you to be quiet. Don't let people make you afraid and cause you to run back into the corner when you speak against these things. It's wickedness. Read between the lines. The enemy wants to shift you into self-idolatry. The enemy wants to shift you into making yourself God, into making yourself king, into doing whatever pleases you. Wake up. Read between the lines. Some of these popular posts, some of these, these trends and these memes, it, it's, it's rooted in new age, it's new, rooted in mysticism, it's rooted in humanism, it's psychology, and it contradicts the word of God. It contradicts the word of God. Don't be quick to share, to reshare and repost everything. Don't be quick to jump on every trend and every bandwagon. Wagon. Read between the lines. There are many Christians today that are, that are very, very passive. They're very passive about their faith. They're very passive about who they serve. They are very passive. But like I said, who's going to warn people when a train is coming? If somebody were standing on a train track and a train were coming and they could not hear or see the train and you saw it coming, what would you do? You would run up to the person. You would shout at them. You would push them out of the way. Some people might say that was mean of you for pushing them. That was mean of you for shouting at them. But it's the same thing in the spirit. We as believers, we see the train of destruction coming. We see judgment coming. We see people shifting, Christians shifting into self-idolatry, Christians shifting into worshiping everything and everyone except God. Who is going to sound the alarm? Who's going to shout and say, hey, get out the way? Who's going to push these people out of the way? In spite of the backlash, in spite of being talked about, in spite of being posted about, who cares what people say? Is God pleased? Who cares if a thousand Christians bash you? A thousand Christians, quote unquote, Christians, because we know who the, who the real sons and daughters of God are. Who cares if they bash you? Will you speak up? Will you, will you, will you spare now? Will you declare the word of God in spite of? And I'm almost done. I'm going to read um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. And it says, but know this. And again, it's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. And it says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Men will be lovers of themselves. What do we see today? Black is king. Black people are gods and goddesses, you know, worshiping black people. We have a whole religion, the, the black Hebrew Israelites, about worshiping themselves, finding out your lineage and, and your God's chosen people because you're black. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. It's garbage. You know, read your Bible. So it says men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Everyone is all about money. A lot of these people are going into witchcraft because they want money. They want to use that. They want to manipulate that to get what they want. So men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. They will be proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, they will have a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. From such people turn away. The Bible tells us to turn away from such people, to turn away from these things, but instead we're turning towards it because it makes us feel good, because we've made ourselves idols, we made ourselves God. If it pleases us, if it serves us, we turn towards these things and towards these people instead of turning away. If a celebrity is saying God, if, if a celebrity is saying that black is king, the Bible tells us to turn away from these things, but instead Christians are turning towards it and still calling them, themselves Christians, still calling themselves Christ followers. That's an oxymoron. It's an oxymoron. And, and they have a, a form of godliness, but denying its power. There's no power in them. There's no power to transformation. We know what the power of God does. It transforms us. So read between the lines. Know what God's word says. Study the word. 
and don't be quick to accept everything. The enemy wants to desensitize you. He wants to take your soul. He wants to destroy you. The enemy has an agenda. So be careful. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. Be slow to, to accept everything. Be slow to, to, to receive everything. And I truly, truly believe, remember, this is a warning. I truly believe that the, these things are going to get worse, okay? These things are going to get worse. And believers, we need to be aware of the of what the enemy is, is doing. And we need to open up our mouths and warn people. We need to speak against these things. The enemy has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He is after your soul and he wants to cut your head off. The enemy is not your friend. Um, he has come in the most subtle way that looks and feels good to you. He's going to come in a way that's very familiar. He's going to come looking like an angel of light, but really he's an angel of darkness. He's come to deceive you, and he's come in a godly, almost Christ-like way. But it is not of God, so be aware. And while um, I was putting this together, like God reminded me of that, um, what's it called? Like the, what is it called? The story of Little Red Riding Hood. For those um, who've heard of it, Little Red Riding Hood, she was sent by her mother to go through the forest to her grandmother's house to give her grandmother some food. And on the way, she met a wolf and the wolf ran before her and went to the grandma's house and disguised itself as her grandmother. So in this story, the closer and closer she got to the wolf, the more the wolf was ready to devour her. And a lot of us, the enemy has, the wolf has disguised himself as something familiar. It's disguised itself as something good. And to be honest, the enemy has disguised itself behind your favorite pastor, behind your favorite social media influencer, behind your favorite celebrity. And they, they, they put things on to disguise them. The, the enemy through them has put things on that seem godly, that seem familiar, that seem good to you to disguise itself. But the closer you get to it, the closer you will be to being devoured. The closer you get to it, the closer you will be to being devoured. And the thing is, her mother, in, in the story of Little Red Riding Hood, her mother told her, do not talk to strangers. And there, that reminded me of the, of the verse in John 10 that says, my sheep know my voice, and the strangers, they will not follow. Do you know God's voice? Will you be able to discern when it's a wolf speaking that looks like God? When it's a wolf speaking that looks like, that comes in the form of your favorite person, right? When it's a wolf speaking, will you be able to hear and discern if it's God or not? Can you discern when something is almost God? Can you discern when something is almost God? And are you mature in the word enough to read between the lines? Are you mature in the word of God? Are, are you, have you filled yourself enough? And we're all growing, like none of us know everything. But have you filled yourself with the word of God enough to know when this is a wolf? This isn't my grandmother. This is a wolf. This isn't just a celebrity. This is a wolf speaking through them. This isn't just a pastor. This isn't just a Christian social media influencer. This isn't just some person online. This is a wolf speaking through them. Can you discern that? Can you discern that? Can you read between the lines and be able to tell when something contradicts the word of God? So many people are getting closer and closer to things that seem innocent, that seem friendly, and that seem pleasant. But little do they know that they're about to be devoured and destroyed. And how do we know that they're being devoured and destroyed? Because they're being given over to a reprobated mind. Because now they no longer have a God conscience. They're Christians who no longer, literally, they don't have a God conscience. They're not, they're not convicted about certain things. They're not yielded to God anymore. They're, they're lukewarm. Little do they know they've gotten further and further away from God and his word and closer to the enemy, closer to being devoured. Some are being given over to a reprobated mind. They have no God conscience. Even though they say they're believer, things that are clearly laid out in the word of God as sin, things that God tells us not to do, now they're saying it's okay. Now they're saying just accept it. Now they're saying don't, over, don't overreact. Now they're saying don't take things so seriously. Now they're saying, you know, you're too spiritual, you're too deep. And I understand we shouldn't be too, you know, high up in the skies or whatever, but now they're saying you're too deep to the point where they've been desensitized, to the point where they've been devoured and they don't even know it. Pray for them. Pray for them. 
All right, so that's the word. Read, read between the lines, open your words. I encourage you to get into the Bible. If you don't have a, have a Bible, find it and open it. We're get, you're going to need the word of God in these last days. I'm telling you, things are going to get worse. I'm, I'm telling you, they're going to be preachers that are going to start saying things. They've already started to do it, but saying things that are almost God, saying things that seem good, accepting things, starting movements, right? And it's not going to be of God. But if you're not in your word, you're going to be led astray. So read between the lines, all right? Do not accept everything, even if it looks innocent. Check everything. Compare everything with the word of God. Look at everything through the lens of scripture, okay? And not through your own understanding, all right? So that was the word, and I pray that it encouraged you. I only came on here because God told me to, and I know that somebody somewhere needs to um, hear this. So I um, also encourage you to share this with someone if you know that someone is getting into some crazy stuff that's not of God, share it with them and let them know that, you know, they need to be alert. They need to be awake. They need to be drunk in the spirit and not drunk in this world. All right. Love you all. Thanks for joining me. Have a great evening. Goodbye.